friends, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and it is time for the 2023 Holiday Gift Guide. Thank you folks for reminding me in the comments that I haven't posted it yet. Last year I had it up in the middle of October and this year I'm running a little late. But I was waiting for a few things to come in um, and I may do a kind of another gift recommendation later on uh, in the season, but, uh, but hey, time is of the essence and um, I want to give a variety of gifts from a variety of different po uh, price points from inexpensive stocking stuffers all the way up to, you know, beautiful items for your studio that um, that are a little bit more pricey. But I am definitely going to be recommending things that I think are a good value for money, that are going to be well received, that hopefully are not going to be the same old, same old things, and some things that you can get for the artist that has everything that will surprise and delight them. So with that, let's move the camera overhead to my table so I can show you some of these things in depth. I think I'm going to start off with watercolors. I have a lot to get to. Um, I will link everything down below. If you want to, you know, make notes, you can, but I will put everything in the video description so you can find it out. Or if you're looking at it on my blog, there'll be a list under the video on my blog. Um, and of course, if you have questions on anything that you're curious about, please leave the com in, in the comments below. If you're like, I, I tried this, what do you think of this particular set or that particular set? And if I've used it, I will share. And I have reviews on all these products on my YouTube channel and lots of other ones too. So if you see something that looks good, check my channel. I might have a review on it. I want to start off with watercolors because I'm sure that's what a lot of you guys are here for. And the thing I probably recommend first is that this set right here, this is the Gansai Tandy Art Nouveau watercolor set. Here you can see a swatch of the colors. They're muted, beautiful pastel shades. There are some more vibrant shades as well. It's just a really beautiful set. And I do have a few tutorials done with these and a review on these if you want to check them out. Um, they're, they're not available in the set of 48 standard colors. So if you buy this set and somebody already has a 48 set, they're not going to have any duplications. The only set these colors would come in would be the set of 100 uh, that is the expensive one in the wood box, which is a beautiful set. I don't have it, but that would be a beautiful gift as well. Um, but this one is, uh, is new this year and it's been kind of hard to find. It is, I think, around 20 uh, $28 on Blick and it's like 41 on Amazon. So definitely I would recommend grabbing it at Blick, waiting till you have a few other things you're going to buy to get to free shipping. And that's what I would do there. But just stunning colors and not too many people have these yet. So that would be my, probably my first pick because it's kind of, it's kind of quirky and, and, um, and new. Uh, another thing, another set I'm going to recommend, or another brand I'm going to recommend, because you can't go wrong, and these have been amazingly priced on Amazon, the Rosa Gallery Watercolors. I reviewed their set of 12 in a cardboard box a couple years ago, and I was so blown away by the quality for the price. And just their regular prices are good every day of the week, but they've been like running closeout specials on a lot of these, so if you can snag one of their sets on sale, I highly would recommend it. They have sets of 12, uh, sets of 16, sets of 21, and uh, sets of 28, I believe, and they're all full pans. They're a little bit smaller than a standard full pan, but the colors are great. Um, I just bought this one because it was on sale for $20. It was regular, I think, $40. It must have been because it was 50% off, and um, I really love this palette. What I'll probably end up doing is as I use up ones from my tin, I'll just take out these and, and put them in there, but they're in these uh, this molded plastic, and I was thinking I might like to use this palette for gouache and just use my these pans and other palettes, but um, they've got pigment information there. This was a set of 24 and I paid 24. So as you can see, the sales on this brand of paint have been amazing. This brand is made in Ukraine and um, they're just a, a stunning, a stunning paint and I highly recommend them. And you know, you can get them in a cardboard box that are less expensive or these metal tins. They're the most expensive, but still not expensive. And these are professional grade paints. So highly recommend anything by Rosa. I did try the Rosa Studio and I have a review coming out on that soon. I would pass on the Rosa Studio personally because the professional grade, the Rosa Gallery, is only a few dollars more and you get a much higher quality paint. Just a spoiler that I have on that review coming up, but I didn't want anyone to grab the Studio ones, not knowing what they're getting. They're fine if you get them cheap, but I would, I would spend a little extra and get the Rosa Gallery if it was my money. Um, the next set I want to recommend is a quirky, a quirky set. And I actually really like it. And this would be what I'd recommend for, um, 
somebody who wants a travel set, maybe somebody that's pretty new to watercolor, uh, or if you just want kind of an inexpensive set to take with you somewhere that you're not going to worry too much about, this set by uh, Zen Art Supplies is really kind of kind of quirky and neat. It's um, it comes with a swatch card. It comes with I think it says it's a 24 set, but it actually has 26 colors. And it's just uh, it's just fun. The colors are very inky and intense. It has all these brushes and a pencil that comes with it. I just I'm a sucker for a cute palette. This is um, regular price around forty dollars. I don't know if it's on sale or if there's a coupon at the moment, but and the palette does stain, so I mean it's not perfect, but I just think it's it's a delight and it's quirky and it's fun and you have everything you need to do some painting except for a sketchbook. So um, yeah, I, I really like this set. And it's back in stock. It was out of stock for a while. It's just a neat uh, thing. They say 24 half pans, but mine came with two extra ones. I don't know if they all do, but yeah, it's 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 a quirky, clever little set from Zen Art Supplies. And probably the person you're buying for doesn't have this already. And I, I try to find things like that for the gift guide that are just a little bit different. And the final watercolor set that I'm going to recommend has been on sale for some people have picked this up for $15. I think I paid $22 for this and I thought it was a great deal, but pretty steadily it's been around $18 on Amazon. Now I have taken the paints out and put my own paints in, so I do want to warn you there, but this is the Cotman Field palette and for $15 to $18 you could afford to buy it just for the palette and put your own paints in it. There's nothing wrong with Cotman watercolors. Um, they are great for travel because they don't get gooey like my paints did there. Uh, that's a Cotman color right there, I believe. Um, but it comes with 12 half pans. I obviously changed my note a bit. It has this water container and the cap actually hooks onto the end so you can put your water in there. It's got a little field brush. It's just a great little travel set and um, I bought it just for the palette at $21 or $22. It's even better at, you know, $18. And uh, But the paint's good and this would be a nice uh, nice first travel set for somebody. Great for, a, um, great for a beginner, great for a student, great for somebody who likes to travel, um, a dabbler. I just think it's wonderful and for the price to get a travel set, I think that's just a really great... Um, a really great deal. Of course, my favorite travel palette's actually in my car right now. It's the Portable Painter by Portable Painter Company, and uh, I will link that down below. It is more expensive. It comes empty, but that would be for somebody who really loves travel painting and doesn't have the setup that they're that they're in love with yet. Um, but I will link that down below. As I said, it's in my car. I don't, and I, I think I've shared it in pretty much every gift guide in the past, so I didn't want to du duplicate too much. Next, I want to recommend some brushes. And this is a set that I picked up this summer and I used it for my class, 30 Days to Better Painting. And I just, I cannot say enough good things about this brush set. It's $25, you get 10 brushes, a three quarter inch flat, a three quarter inch uh, cat's tongue or oval wash. You get a, a number 12 round, and this is a chunky number 12. It's not a stingy number 12. Like sometimes these sets, that are made in China are really small. Like when you you're, you buy a number 12 and you get what would we would consider a number eight. These are not stingy at all. These are, this Art Agria is a Spanish company and they designed the, the brushes and then had them made in China as I understand. But uh, synthetic squirrel hair, very absorbent. This is a number 10 round, a number eight round. It's got all the, the ones I use all the time. A number six round, a uh, number three round and a number zero round. And then you've got a half inch flat or number six or half inch flat. You've got a half inch or, yeah, I'd say it's about a half inch, maybe three eighths dagger. Great, great stuff for $25. It comes in this container, which is great for travel. You can keep your brushes protected. It also comes with a velvet pouch, but honestly, I do not recommend storing the brushes in the velvet pouch because I think you're going to damage the bristles. In fact, if I was giving this to a to a kid or a young person, I probably would take out the velvet pouch and just give them this because that way you don't have to worry about them trying to put them in the, the pouch and damaging them. But this Art Agria set of 10 watercolor brushes, you can't beat it. The other set I want to recommend is also by Art Agria, and it is their set of two Intuition squirrel, uh, Synthetic Squirrel Quill Brushes. And the reason I like this set is you get a, a fairly small one, which quill sizing is different than typical sizing. You get a number two, which is probably equivalent to about a 10 round, and then you get a number six, which is equivalent to a 16 in a regular round brush. These are absorbent, wonderful, um, just expressive brushes. And there's a few other sets I also like. I like the Gravy set of nine, but, and I would, I recommend that if you're buying for like, say, um, 
like maybe three watercolors and you're going to break it up but the, the sizes are just too similar and I don't think you need that many quills but these two are just really well really well chosen and uh, in my opinion they're as nice as the Princeton Neptune quills which would run you about you know 20 bucks a pop and this set is like 20 bucks for two or 17 dollars for two I think actually I think they the Princeton might be 27 for one. But anyway, recommend these two brush sets. Your watercolorist will not be disappointed with these. Even if they're an experienced watercolorist, they have these, they could use these for travel. They could pop these right in the set, right in the box with that and keep them all together. And, uh, and I love it when the packaging that they sell you the product in is really nice and reusable and practical. So yeah, Art Agria brushes, that's gonna be my pick. Um, next I have a divided water container and I was so surprised at how big this was. I was expecting this to be kind of dinky. This is by Meaden and I think it was around 25 bucks. It's um, almost, it's a little over three inches high and it is, let's see, at the base, which is smaller, one, two, three, four, five, a little five and a half inch wide. It doesn't sound very big, but when you when you have it in your hands, I mean, this is my hands compared to it, it's a pretty chunky water brush, uh, watercolor thing. And I always use two containers for water. And as you can see, I got my trusty paint pucks, which I also recommend, um, but I recommended them last year in the gift guide. So I still recommend them, but I think this is kind of nice because it looks really elegant. And then what I would do is actually put a paint puck in at least the dirty water side so that you have that to clean your brush off with. Um, uh, paint pucks are five, about $5. They're a wonderful stocking stuffer. And I would take this, add this, and then you've got an even more elegant solution to your water. I like to wash my brush in the dirty side and get fresh water on the clean side. That's why it's a divided bucket. And uh, this comes very well packaged. It comes in set in a, um, a styrofoam box inside a, a corrugated cardboard box. You could save that box. So if you ever need to move or package it up, you have that to protect it because this is a really nice thing. And while we're on the ceramic stuff, I want to recommend a porcelain palette. Now this one's by Meaden. I've had this one for a few years. I paid, I think around $14 for it. And it's really, really good quality, nice and heavy. They have a lot of different designs. I have uh, one of their square palettes. It came in a three pack I bought a couple years ago when I did, um, I actually took the other two and I made gift, uh, put them in some gifts for my mom and sister who watercolors. And I've always got really well packaged products when I've ordered from Meaden. This was sent to me for review. This I bought with my own money. Um, and I highly recommend their palettes. Uh, there are some really cute palettes that I haven't tried personally by the Bowerbird company on Amazon. They have like um, little ones that look like houses and hot air balloons that are also really cute. I haven't used them, but they have good reviews. Um, I've just been using Meaden meet a lot because, I mean, how many ceramic palettes do you need? Now, if you're on a budget and you want to give your watercolors a beautiful ceramic palette, hit up thrift stores. Look for deviled egg, ceramic deviled egg dishes. Look for cute um, white ceramic plates. You can find, you can even go to the dollar store and get a ceramic plate, like a square one, something that's a little bit unusual, and they make wonderful palettes. So don't feel like you have to go and buy any of these things to make a wonderful gift for a painter in your life. You certainly don't. Um, like you can make a brush rest out of clay. These are some I made out of um, air dry clay. So like hold your brushes, you can make you can make some of those for, for somebody. So, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Just make sure you, you varnish it really well so that it doesn't like, um, you know, if you're making this out of air dry clay, it could turn back into clay if it got wet. So just make sure you varnish it really well. But you can definitely do stuff like that. I probably wouldn't make a palette because you have so much sitting water. I would just go and thrift something if, uh, if you don't have the money to spend on a bespoke or a made for purpose ceramic palette. But trust me, they'll work just as well. So, you know, it's a thought that counts. Really, this is just to kind of give you some ideas. But I really love this uh, water container. I still love the paint pucks. But the nice thing about glass and ceramic is that you can get it really clean. And I did recently scrub this, but it's still stained. It still works great. I love it. But it does stain. And um, with ceramic, you can get it really clean, unlike plastic. Like I showed you that plastic palette with the stains on it. That just is part of the course with plastic. Ceramic, you don't have to worry about that. So... Um, it's a little bit of a, of a, of a bougier gift, but it doesn't have to be that expensive. Just, you know, I'll, I'll link some different options for you in the video description, but I really think it's probably going to sound like an ad for Meaden, but I do find that Meaden makes some really wonderful things. Um, and, uh, another thing I want to recommend from them is their 100% cotton watercolor paper. They recently have, well, this is the one that I've, I've done a lot of tutorials on this paper here. It's the 
10.2 inch by 7 inch pad and this is their cold press surface and it is wonderful. I've done a lot of tutorials with this. Highly recommend it. It's very affordable for 100% cotton paper. Um, I've heard a rumor that this is the Baohong watercolor paper um, and I would believe it because I have used the Baohong before and I also really enjoy that. And now they also have this size plus a 5x7 plus a 9x12 in rough cold press and hot press before they just came in cold press. So I'll show you the different textures. So I'll show you actually the cold press with the new branding plus uh, compared to the cold press that I have in this pad. I would say that the new cold press looks a little bit more like arches and the old cold press looks uh, a little bit less textured but pretty similar. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera. The um, hot press kind of reminds me of the texture of the Paul Rubens hot press. It's not quite as slick as Arches. Arches is a little bit like super smooth. So it's got a little bit of texture, but not much. And then their rough is very rough, kind of like an Arches rough, if you're familiar with that. So just to give you an idea, but 100% cotton paper, also available in nine by 12. Um, they all have a protective sheet on them. I had cut the protective sheet off to show you the texture. But like I said, if you want to see this paper in action, I will, um, I will put it you can find it on my YouTube channel. Also, if you're going to shop at Meadin's website versus Amazon, I will, I have a 10% off coupon code I can share with you and I'll put, it's Lindsay10. If you're shopping at Meadin.com, I'll put it in the video, just the yeah video description. Um, so you can always compare on Amazon versus Meadin, see where the best price is. I believe the first, the shipping is free on Meadin at a certain amount. So um, yeah, it just depends, I guess, what you're ordering to go with it. So that would be my pick for paper in a, like a, a block form would be those uh, meat in 100% cotton papers. Now, if you are looking for a sketchbook, maybe you want something small that you can stick in stocking, I've got a couple options as well. Um, for my two small sketchbook options, stocking stuffers, I recommend the Paul Rubens uh, little small hot press sketchbook here. This is around, I'm thinking it's around, uh, ten dollars and it's got 20 sheets you can paint on both sides if you want to get uh, 40 pages and it's tiny it comes in pink or black and it's um just under four inches by just over five inches in size and it's a nice it's a nice little a nice little book there's also perforated pages if you want to tear out the sheets but I haven't had any problem I haven't used this a ton but I have used the Paul Rubens paper a lot and haven't had any problems with it it's a uh, it's about the same smoothness as the meat and paper maybe it's made in the same factory I'm not sure but it's a um, it's a nice nice paper and very affordable and it will fit in the stockings which is really nice this one here is the uh, art creation sketchbook by Royal Talons and it comes in a bunch of different colors which I really like which is nice if you're if you have children or grandchildren and you're buying for a bunch of them you can get them all a different color you can you can use this it's very smooth uh, off-white kind of like a cream paper you can use it with colored pencils you can use it with excuse me <coughs> Uh, gouache you could use it with watercolors it's really probably more meant for a dry a dry media but um, but it does pretty well with like paint pens and, and wet stuff too. It's not a thick paper, but it's pretty robust for how thin it is. And you get a lot of pages, which I like. And this comes in, uh, this is like four and three quarter by four and three quarter, I think. Yeah, well, I would say, yeah, four and three quarter by four and three quarter. Um, it's also coming, it comes in like, I think five by eight. And then there are a couple larger, larger books. But I think with the thinness of the paper, I would recommend the smaller two books for um, for gifts. This one is around six bucks. I think the other one's probably around seven or eight, the larger one, the, the like five by five by eight or so. But yeah, this is a great little book and it looks cute. You, if you had a bunch of kids, they could stack, put all their books on a bookshelf and they'd look so cute together in different colors. And then uh, kind of tried and true, and it doesn't matter what uh, finish you get because I've, I really like all of these, would be the Strathmore Visual Journal. Um, and Amazon has been running some good prices on these. The Bristol Vellum is great for uh, for markers. It's also good for color pencil, um, pen and ink. You can use watercolor on it. You can use watercolor markers on it. It's and you can use alcohol markers on it. It's a nice, thick, good all-around marker pen paper. 
and you can get Bristol Vellum or Bristol Smooth for that. There's also the 140 pound watercolor paper that I like, and I would shop around. Amazon has been having some good sales on Strathmore products, and this was on sale for like $4.15 a couple days ago. I don't know if that price will still be there. Um, if not, compare Amazon to Blick. I'll put both links down so you can compare because oftentimes Blick will have this one for around six or seven bucks every day of the week. So just to kind of um, uh, just shop around. Of course, maybe my memory's faltering. It might be a while since I've looked on Blick for these, but these in the different finishes are wonderful. You can get them in mixed media. I like the mixed media paper as well. So pair it with whatever supply you're going to pair it with. Pair their appropriate visual journal with it, and I think your gift recipient would just absolutely love it. And moving on from there, I think I will recommend some markers. And the first markers I'm going to recommend, keeping with the watercolor theme, I'm going to recommend the, and these are not in the case they come in, but I'm going to recommend the Faber-Castell Albright Drawer watercolor markers. These are available in sets or available open stock. So you can just buy a couple and stick them in the stocking. You could buy a whole set and be like all bougie. Um, Amazon and Blick generally run about the same price for the for the sets, but if you want to get them open stock, you'll definitely want to get them from Blick because Amazon, anytime you buy anything open stock on Amazon, it's usually quite expensive, quite, quite a bit more because they factor the shipping into the charge. But you get a bullet tip on one end, you get a a uh, brush tip on the other. They are a like a felt tip brush, which is pretty much what I've seen for watercolor markers. Um, but I've done a few tutorials with these. I've done a review on these. So if you want more information, you can find that on my YouTube channel. But these are a beautiful, light, fast watercolor marker. And I think the quality is a little bit better. They're quite comparable to Winsor & Newton's, but um, the recent Winsor & Newton markers that I've used, watercolor markers, I don't think are quite as good as their old version, and I think these are actually a little bit cheaper than the Windsor & Newton ones, so um, yeah, Faber-Castell watercolor markers. And this case, if I can find it, I'll link it, but um, this is by Artify, and it comes also with a larger bag. It's wonderful for these chunkier markers. Um, it holds 48, I believe. I do have my Windsor & Newton markers in here, too. This is a great little case, and uh, if it's available, I will link it up. If not, any marker case that is sold for the chunkier alcohol markers will work. Um, Arteza makes a nice one. Um, they have like a 60 case and a 120 or 144 case and a 60 case, I think, or maybe it's a 75 case. They're, it's pretty, pretty affordable. Um, so either way, it just depends on what you like, honestly. Um, I don't think any of them are necessarily better than the others. It's just what you like. I like this one because it's not too big and it holds all my light fast watercolor markers and that's what I wanted to keep together because the only two brands that I know that do light fast watercolor markers are Winsor Newton and Faber Castell. So I like to keep them together so I know that the artwork I do with those can be displayed without me worrying about them fading. Uh, next for markers, I'm going to recommend, and honestly, there's so many ones that you can go with, but the reason I'm going to go with this brand is because they're continuously adding refills, open stock options, and um, their papers are really good. They're they're not the cheapest, but I find they're they're just really reliable, and I think five years from now, they're going to be the brand that's still around, and that would be the Ohuhu. And I would say, honestly buy the set that your recipient would enjoy the most and that fits in your budget. Um, they have sets anywhere from 12 all the way up to 320. And uh, I would recommend their Honolulu line, which gives you a brush on one end. And on the other end, you can choose either a chisel or a bullet tip. Now, I don't have the one that had the bullet tip on the brush, the brush and bullet together, but I do have their bullet tip chisel tip markers. I would recommend the, the Honolulu set B that has the brush on one end and the bullet tip on the other end because um, I just think that would be a little bit more useful for most people, especially if you're buying these for a rubber stamper or an adult coloring book enthusiast. Um, I happen to use the chisel tips a lot, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother me. Plus, I have the fine tips in the uh, original Uhuhu sets, but I feel like their sets are very well put together. This is uh, their set of 72, which has a really nice overall set. Uh, overall range of colors. It's got a nice range of grays, a nice range of vibrant colors. And then they also have sets of 48 pastel colors, which you could get to add to this um, down the line if you want to keep, you know, keep the cost a little bit lower. Uh, they also have refills for their most popular colors, and I think they're working on getting refills for all of their colors. I just feel like this brand really has longevity in mind, and 
Um, while they're not the cheapest budget markers out there, I feel like they're pretty good. Um, I don't recommend Copic markers anymore. I used to recommend them like if you had if you had no uh, no um, if you had no limit to what you wanted to spend, I would recommend Copics, but recently they're having issues with the caps not fitting tightly and the markers drying out and uh, and they're, they've reduced the size of their refills. So I, I just don't want to recommend the Copics anymore. If you want the Copic quality, my recommendations, I have two recommendations for you and I'll just grab them off my marker shelf because I have them on my marker shelf actually because uh, they're open stock markers rather than in sets for the most part. Uh, although you can buy sets but um, I'm just trying to find this other brand. If you want something that has like the nibs like Copic has, so it's a little bit higher quality um, and it has refills and you can replace the brush nibs and um, all of that jazz, I would recommend the Blick Studio brush. Now make sure you get the Blick Studio brush. They have another like, um, they have another range. I think it's called the Blick Illustrator, which frays terribly. I don't recommend that. It comes out every year on the holidays and it's confusing. Don't get that one. You want the Blick Studio and I will link to it. Um, they're kind of pricey, but they've got that Copic like nib that's much more flexible. It's a neoprene nib versus a felt nib. The Ohuhu's and most of your budget markers will have the felt nib. Um, and it's kind of the shape of a Copic marker. I haven't had any issues with drying out with these. I've had mine for, I think about a six years. I got, I bought them when they first came out. I was so excited to try them because there weren't so many options around at that point, but the quality is wonderful. Their refills are 25 cc's, which is like the size of the old Copic refills. And they, um, I think they're around $6 for a refill. So very affordable. Once you get over the expense of buying the markers you want or one of the sets, the upkeep is, is kind of how Copic used to be. Um, and then the other one I'd recommend would be Altenew. So the Blick Studio is uh, like the Copic sketch. You've got a chisel on one end and you've got the brush on the other. The Altenew has a bullet on one end and it has a the neoprene brush nib on the other. Their refills are, I believe, 30 mls or 30 cc's and I think they're around six bucks a refill. So I think the upkeep on the Altenew is actually cheaper and I like the fact that they have the the bullet nib and the brush nib because I think that's a little bit more useful. Now Altenew is a rubber stamp company so I think I went with that configuration because it's more useful for stampers but it's also more useful for adult coloring book enthusiasts and um, you do not have to throw your marker away. I also like the fact that it has black barrel, a black matte barrel so even if you get ink smudges on it it's still going to look nice and the quality of these is really uh, really, really wonderful. And sometimes around Black Friday, they do some good sales on these markers and they do good sales on the refills, like especially if you wanna buy a bulk pack of the refills. These are available open stock and also in different sets, different colorway sets, if you want to um, kind of buy a set here and there because they are kind of expensive. Um, not as expensive as Copic, but I would say these two markers are better than Copic and uh, um, definitely cheaper in the long run to maintain than Copic markers are. The Ohuhu refills are the same as Copics in size and about in price, so uh, they're a little bit cheaper than Copics in price, but um, but the markers are much cheaper to start out with, so it just depends on where you're going to go. Um, now there are some some much cheaper budget markers that I still love and I still recommend. They just don't have refills or replacement nibs. Um, and that would be like one that I recommend continuously is a Sanjoki marker set. I recommend that for my, um, my I'll call marker class because it's so affordable. And it's a set of 120 markers for $43. You really can't beat it. And if you, and they have reversible nibs. I don't know. I've done a whole review on those. If you want to check that out, that's a great budget set. I still highly recommend it, but, um, if you want a like kind of gifts that's easy to either add on to every year or to you know up keep and not have to throw the markers away, these would be my, my three picks. So uh, I will link those down below. You can check them out and compare them for yourselves. Um, the quality on these two are better, but the price on this one's better. So um, you know, yeah, just uh, Altenew has more color, a larger color range too. I want to mention that Blix color range I think is uh, 144 colors. Altenew I believe is more than that and Ohuhu probably has the largest range. So just to um, kind of something to think about as you are, are buying. Um, but you really can't go wrong with any of them. I think if you're buying for like a teenager that may be in markers for the long haul, the nice thing about the Ohuhu is that it's very popular with a lot of the art influencers. So if they saw that under the Christmas tree, they'd be like, oh, I know that brand so-and-so uses it. And I think it would kind of maybe 
plump up their feathers a little bit and make them feel like, you know, yeah, I got the good stuff and I'm going to do, I'm going to use what my favorite artist is using. And I, um, so, and that's another reason I think that's kind of nice that it might kind of give them a little extra boost of confidence knowing that it's a brand that a lot of, a lot of other young artists use. Whereas, um, Altenew is probably a little more popular in like the, the rubbing, rubber stamping, rubber stamping circles. Um, but I think it's a better marker. But just, eh, you know, you do you. And uh, the, you're not going to go wrong. You you won't go wrong. I will link the Sanjokis as well if you want that. They're really low price marker set. It's, it's a great value. I recommended it last year, so I was just trying to do something a little bit different as well. Um, also, in the pen department, there's... Oh, oh, wait, before we're done markers, Elko markers. I also want to recommend these. So you've got somebody that's got everything. Maybe you're buying for a nephew or a niece or um, somebody that's been doing marker art for a while and you want to get them something that they probably don't already have, I would recommend these um, wide markers from Uhuhu. Copic used to do a wide marker. Now they only sell an empty wide marker that you can fill with whatever color you want, which is fine. You know, I think they're just probably not as popular. But Ohuhu came out with a few sets of these wide markers and also, I believe, an open stock colorless blender that you could refill with whatever you want. Um, I would recommend the Halcyon Oasis set because it's got a couple, it's a set of six, it's $25. It has a couple browns, um, I think it's got a couple blues and a green. It's just a really nice, uh, a really nice kind of those colors that you would use to fill in a really large area. They also have a set of grays, they have a set of blues, and then they have just kind of like a, just like a basic set, like your basic primaries. But I don't think the primaries would be as useful as having the, uh, the sea glass, the grays, or the um, Halcyon Oasis. But I think the Halcyon o Oasis would be the one I'd go with. It's just a wonderful little collection, but I keep all mine in a jar because they're, they're handy. And you can refill these with the refills that who who sells and they're just a really nice wide nib that you can easily fill in backgrounds or skies or grasses so nice for anyone that does architectural drawing landscape drawing urban sketching and enjoys alcohol markers so and it's it's something it, they just came out this year probably your gift recipient doesn't have them yet so that's uh, that's why I want to recommend them and uh, they're, they're fun I really enjoy using them they're they're just kind of quirky and new and products like that are, are really nice well, for gifts, because, you know, you don't want to get them something they already have. Um, this has been one of my favorite things since I found them last year. They are flat compasses. Now, I bought a set, I bought a pack of 12 for like 12 bucks or maybe $14, maybe 10 I don't know, somewhere around there. And I have these stashed everywhere. I have them in my travel art bag. I have them in my, my random little art desks where I scroll supplies around my house. I have them right here on my main desk and I use it every day. These are great for making circles and arches in your sketchbooks because you don't have to you don't make a you don't make a mark you don't make a point or a, a hole in your paper because there's no point like a regular compass which is fine but like I'll show you I know it's right here why can't I for goodness sake I'm, I'm, I swear I go to film a video and I can't find anything well here we go oh my goodness there's no sharp points so if you're, you know, you want to send your kid to school with a compass, you don't have to worry about them poking themselves or anyone else with it. And you don't have to worry about it poking through your art bag. It's great. Flat compass. And I think there's sturdier ones that just come singular, singularly for about five or ten bucks. Or you can get a pack and you can, you know, give them to all your friends. A great little stocking stuffer. These, uh, there's also a pack of three pens. The third one is in my uh, travel sketch bag upstairs, but this is the Tombow Fudonosuke. Fudonosuke, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, hard tip and soft tip, and then there's one that's got a gray on one end and a black on the other. And this pack is five dollars. It's regular ten, I think, on Amazon, and it's been five dollars for like a couple of years. And I love this set. I've been buying it many times for gifts. I just opened up my last set. Uh, the other day, it's a great buy for $5 to get those three pens um, for any marker or watercolor, marker lover or watercolorist on your uh, list or any um, calligrapher, anybody that likes to do calligraphy, also really good for that. And also along that vein, I just bought these, I've used them a little bit, very similar nibs to the Fudonosuke Soft. And this is the Uni Pen by the Mitsubishi Pencil Company. You get a black, you get a sepia, you get a dark gray and a light gray. And it's like, it's, um, it's the nib is just like that. 
And you can see it is it is a uh, waterproof and marker proof. That's what the the marks you can make is like. It's kind of like a soft nib, kind of like. Is this a soft one? I think this is a soft one, kind of like the the feud nib. Yeah, it's like the soft feud nib on these. And uh, yeah, it's great if you like to do watercolor or alcohol marker because sometimes you don't want to have a really dark. You want to do some outlining, but you don't want to have it really dark, so you can use a light gray and it's not going to wash away. You can still see your lines a bit, or you know, you can always do your line work afterwards. Um, I like markers that will work with both because I like to use alcohol markers and watercolors. And for this set of four is ten bucks. Great little stocking stuffer. Set of three is five. Great little stocking stuffer. You really can't go wrong with either of those. I probably would say if you're trying to choose between the two, I would go with the Tombow for five dollars, a set of three for five dollars, because um, they, those pens last really well and the tips are really, um, really robust. And I have not used the Uni pens long enough to say how long they'll last, but I can 100% recommend the Tombows. But I thought that was fun. I wanted to try those different colors out and uh, play with them, so I thought I would mention them to you guys as well. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's move on to some fun things that are new that probably your gift recipient doesn't have yet. And these would be the Derwent Inktense XL blocks. And you can get them open stock, which is individually, or you can get them in these sets of six or 12. Uh, if budget allows, I would recommend the 12 sex. It's got that beautiful magenta. It's got, it's got, well, actually this one has white too. Um, I think this one's going for, ooh, I'm thinking around $70. And this one's probably around $40. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I would also price compare between Blick and Amazon. I'll put links to both so you can check it out. Um, and I did talk to my contact at Derwent because I teach for them. And I, and uh, I asked if they would sell empty boxes because they have a lot of different XL products that are wonderful. In fact, I'm recommending these because these are my favorite, but there are like XL Graphite, XL uh, Charcoal, XL, all sorts of XL products you might prefer, but these are these are what I'm really recommending. These remind me of the Biarco Art Graph Taylor Shocks, if you're familiar with those, um, but they're permanent once wet. Uh, they're, you can work on fabric, so they would be fun for mixed media artists, for quilters, for canvas artists, for watercolorists, for pastel artists. You can do your underpainting with these, let it dry, and then go over with pastels. Fun, fun products, um, and I highly recommend them. And they're new this year, so probably your artist wouldn't have them yet. And when they, if they use one up, they can buy just a single one. Now there's also the uh, a 72 set of, of their smaller blocks, which is also really nice, but those have been out for a few years and your artist might already have them. Something new in this vein that also came out this year that I'm sure any artist would absolutely love is the set of 100 Inktense pencils. So Inktense pencils have been around for a while. I think I bought my first set. Oh my goodness, it was before I started doing YouTube. So I've been on YouTube for 13 years. It was before YouTube, I bought my first set of Intense pencils. And they are just wonderful, thick lead, gorgeous mixed media pencils. They Once you add water to them and they dry, they're permanent, they don't lift up. So they're good for underpainting for watercolor. They're good for fabric. They're, um, they're just wonderful. And now they have a 100 set. So they've released 28 new colors this year. If you know your uh, gift recipient already has, the um the 72 set you can always just get the 28 set opens the 28 colors open stock and surprise them with that um or you can you know go whole hog and give them the 100 tin because that would just totally knock anyone's socks off i am absolutely sure uh now i also want to talk about a couple other gifts that would be like totally knock somebody's socks off and that would be um actually first before we do that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend a couple budget pencil sets because I think it's important to, to keep in mind all budgets. One would be the um, Ardex set of 72, or they, they have a set of 176, um, 126, I think. These are very similar to Prismacolors, very soft, very buttery. I recommend these for... Um, colored pencil uh, for people who like to do coloring books because they're so soft even like elderly or small children because you don't have to press hard to get a lot of color they are they are wonderful they definitely remind me of Prismacolor but I have less breakage issues with these which is nice and they come with a nice little storage box the larger set um, has some advantages and disadvantages the advantages 
are, so if you look at this, if I pull out a couple pencils, you can see that these are in, there's kind of like a wide channel that's connected. So if you take out a few, these will start to fall over on you. The new set has a foam insert and every pencil has its own hole, but it's got, it's kind of got two boxes like this here. And then there's one top sleeve that goes over the two. So it's, you have to be careful that you don't just drop the pencils out of those. So it's nice for sitting on your desk if you're going to be stationary, but if you're going to travel at all with it, I would go with a smaller set. The other set I'm going to recommend, and mine are in, I'll have to see if I can grab out one of them, but mine are, because mine are in a big, um, a big, big box, but it would be the Mark Art set of 120 pencils. It's around $23, which is a phenomenal deal. I think it used to be around $40, but they are very, they're firmer. They're more like Holbein pencils, lots of pigment, just a little bit firmer of a core. And uh, I recommend those as well. They are excellent pencil for any coloring book enthusiast. These are great for drawing too. I just don't know light fastness wise, if you're going to display the work, how long they would, they would hold up to fading. So that's the only reason I wouldn't recommend them for like a professional artist, but for any dabbler, coloring book enthusiast, rubber stamper, um, somebody beginning in art, you're, you're not going to go wrong with either or both of those sets really, because you've got a soft set and a harder set. Um, but yeah, those are, those are wonderful. You can't do better for your money for those. Now, let's say you want to surprise your color pencil artist with something that they are going to love. And even if they have it, even if they have some of these colors, they are going to be so thankful that you got them for them because these are tried and true. They're expensive and they're awesome. And I've got two brands. One brand is the Caran d'Ache Luminance. You can get them in sets or open stock. Um, I think the biggest set they do is a hundred, a set of 100 in there. That's fairly new and that's going to be kind of pricey. Um, the set of 72 has been on sale because they came out with a set of 100 and that often happens like with the ink tents, with the next uh, Durant Light Fast, I'm going to show you in a minute with these often when they're coming out with a bigger set, they'll put their smaller sets on sale, especially the one that's, that's the current largest set. Um, so this is a portrait set of 20, which has some really wonderful assorted colors in it. Um, if you are on more of a budget, I would recommend this. I'm thinking this one probably goes for around $60 on Blick. And then, um, if you add this to the set of 72, I think that might give you all of your colors. Would that work out right? Maybe it's 96 is their biggest set. I don't know. But if you get this and the set of 72, there's no overlap. Oh, it's a set of 76. I'm sorry. It's seven, if you get the set of 76 and this, there's no overlap in colors, which is really nice. Um, so it allows you to kind of build on, but even if your artist uses luminance pencils and already has some and they get some duplicates, they're not going to be unhappy because these are such wonderful pencils. You're going to use them up and buy them again. Uh, that's how wonderful they are. The other set that I also really love is the Derwent Lightfast set. So I got the set of 72 because the prices are so good on this set. Um, I think I bought mine for about $150 on Amazon. It was unbeatable price a couple years ago. I started off with a set of 12 to see if I liked them. And then I bought the set of 76. I added the tape on my trays so I could easily lift them out. So that's, that doesn't come that way. And I took out the bottom layer so I could put more pencils in. But then I bought the new 28 colors that they released last year, I think, open stock and just added them to my set. And, uh, and they are absolutely beautiful, wonderful pencils. You can layer them up. They're just so vibrant and so fade resistant. These are light fast up to a hundred years. Um, as are the luminance, you really can't beat either of them. You can get whatever is better for your budget, but um, yeah, you can't go wrong with them. Even if somebody already has some of the pencils, they're gonna be so happy to have more because then you don't have to worry about using them up. They will become favorites if you buy these for somebody. So that would be my bougie, um, money is no object type, uh, type of gift. But you know what? If you still wanna get somebody that bougie product, but you don't have bougie money, buy a few open stock and tie a little sweet ribbon around them or put them in a cute little like tin. And I dollar trade some really cute pencil tins, like real tin ones, real metal ones. And uh, you could put, you know, 10 pencils in there and give that as a gift. That's gonna be so appreciated. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to buy somebody a full set of something to, to give them something they're gonna use all the time and really appreciate. So don't feel like you have to, you have to do that. Um, another thing that is kind of in the, in the craft realm 
uh, this is so fun. I did a video on this and I can't really show you the contents because it's a mess in there. I've used up most of the stuff in here. But um, the Let's Resin UV Resin Starter Kit. I like this because I live in Maine. Uh, it's not Conditions are not perfect all year round for me to use epoxy resin because it gets damp, it gets too cold in my studio, but UV resin cures with a little UV light or with sunlight. And this is so nice for doing jewelry projects, doing, um, you know, thinner cast materials, working with like the thinner molds, they're, they're just, it's just a fun project to do. And this comes with everything you need to make a bunch of um, like botanical style jewelry. It's, uh, and I think you can do some keychains. It's wonderful. And it gives you everything you need, the little UV light, the little bottles of UV resin, and the little, um, the little metal frames to and the little flowers to put in your resin and I think it has some like gl glitters and whatnot. They have a bunch of different starter kits you can look at. Uh, the thing I like about Let's Resin, the UV resin and their epoxy resin is it is no odor and I have had experiences with different resins where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I feel like it's just so up in the air whether it's going to work or not. I feel like they take the guesswork out and their their products, I haven't been disappointed by any of their products yet and um this is the one I'm recommending and I will link to their, I will link to their, um, their store. You can look through their molds. You can look at this set. I'll link to the set in particular. I think this is a really great one for somebody without any resin experience that likes to make jewelry. Um, it's just a fun, it's a fun kit. And, uh, if you're looking for like a nice craft project to do with your teenagers, um, or with your friends, I think this is a really nice one. Another couple kits I want to recommend, um, if you are thinking it well, if you're thinking about knitting or crocheting or you know somebody who wants to get into it, excuse me, this is kind of dusty and the plastic's yellow because I've had this for probably, oh, 15 or more years. I can't remember. I think this is one of the first things I got when I started knitting. Um, the Denise Interchangeable Knitting Needles. I love this set and I got it from a little local shop um, in Bangor. This was probably... I had probably just had my son and he's just turning 21. So I've probably had this for almost 20 years. And I love this little set. You can add the cords together if you want to make a really long um, uh, cable for doing sweaters, knitting in the round. You can also use them like straight needles. You can use them on an airplane because they meet the um, they meet the airplane guidance. They're not too long. And they're just wonderful. The wonderful circular needle set. And I uh, highly recommend them. They have two straight cords, so you can do straight needle work as well. And you have every size you need from a size 5 all the way up to a 15. So it's a great starter set. I got this when I was a new knitter. And um, except, for, except for like double pointed needles or those really chunky needles, they were perfect. They were perfect for most, for like 95% of the projects I was going to do. So I recommend this for... Um, for any new knitter or somebody that wants to have a nice travel set or just have everything co compact. Uh, I also found, because I have small hands, that these smaller interchangeable needles fit my hands really well. So I don't know if it was a man who knits if they would like these smaller these smaller needles, but for me, I just absolutely loved it. My husband got me these this for Christmas one year and it's a fave. I absolutely love it. I like the feeling of the nylon needles and I wasn't sure if I would, but I like it. Um, they don't get sweaty. They don't feel... Like they don't catch the yarn like wood can and they don't get sweaty like or feel cold like aluminum can. So I really like that. And so I liked it so much that I got the Denise Interchangeable Crochet Hooks. So if you like to do um, uh, Tunisian crochet, you like to do those long afghans, they have the long cords for that. Again, you can connect them and keep the weight off the hook if you want to. And uh, you have every size from a, um, a let's see, this is a F or size five or 3.75 if you do millimeters, it's got both sides on here. So everything from an F all the way up to a 19 millimeter. So it's like five to a 19 or a 3.75 millimeter to a 15 millimeter. And uh, yeah, really, I don't think I've found, except for doing like tiny little lace, like using crochet cotton and doing like little flowers or something where I would need like the steel hooks. These do all the, crochet stuff that I need and uh, yeah these are available cheaper than what I got them for uh, now because they have an Amazon store they have different size sets as well these are the originals I don't know if they still have these booklet these book style kits but, um, but yeah I think it's really uh, it's really a great gift it, these I think they're around a hundred dollars when I got them but I think they're cheaper now um, 
So anyway, yes, the Denise Interchangeable system, I think it's great. And uh, I believe they're made, yeah, made in the USA. So that's also a uh, that's also a really good thing. So I'm just taking a quick glance around to make sure I didn't forget to mention anything. Oh yes, you know what? I do have another thing I want to I want to recommend. This is going to be great for any watercolorist or mixed media artist that you know. Please excuse my box is old. I've had this for since before I had kids. So I've been using this product since uh, the late 90s and I have added two since then. Um, but this is the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 watercolor crayons. You can buy them in sets or open stock. I have a little bit of both. And these on Blick and Jerry's too now are $1.58 per crayon or you can buy sets. And I would compare between Blick and Amazon anytime you're buying sets because sometimes the sets are cheaper on Amazon and sometimes they're cheaper on Blick. You just want to check both places and I will link to both. But um, I like the, I love the idea of open stock, buying the colors you think, because some of these colors are really close together buying the colors you know that are going to be really useful or like hand picking somebody's favorite colors putting them in a little tin and i also recommend and excuse me this is old and dirty but i recommend a tiny little palette where when somebody sharpens their crayons they can sharpen them in the palette and then you just add water and then you've got paint so if you need a detail you can take a little brush and you can wet it and you can paint in a detail or if you need to fill a large area you can just do it with a brush and not have to sharpen your crayons all the time. So that would be a great recommendation for any mixed media artist. The full set of 84 colors is $158. Um, or you know you can buy them in smaller sets or individual. You really you really can't go wrong with these. They used to have more colors, but um, but they don't anymore. I think I do have a few of those older colors that they've discontinued. They also have a set of metallics. So if you're not sure if your person has these or not, you could always get a set of 10 metallics. They probably don't have those. And that would just be a really, really fun product for them to have. I like the solid colors over the metallics, but I don't, you could see a lot of my metallics are barely used or not even used at all because they're fun on black paper, but I like the, the regular crayons. Now, if you really want to go big and you want to buy somebody something really special, now, of course, you really ha would have to know somebody's lifestyle, their home. This is, would be great if you're getting it for um, somebody in your household because you know what kind of space they have to work with. But uh, my recommendation would be any of the studio storage or studio furniture easels from Meaden. I find the quality to be really great for the price, and I'm always surprised by how good the quality is for their products. I have a review on the Prashad box. I've used the summer. It was really wonderful. I'm also going to show you the uh, pastel drawers that I have from them. One set I've been using for over a year. The other set just came in, but um, they are gorgeous quality. Studio storage is a great idea. These meat-in drawers are wonderful for storing oil pastels, chalk pastels, pencils, crayons, whatever you have. This is um, a six drawer one that I've been using for about a year in my studio. The, the drawers all move really well and they move a lot better than uh, some of the other brands that I've used. And this is their 10 drawer set, which I haven't filled up yet, but it has little dowels in there that connect them. Now, ordinarily they won't have the uh, the little dowels. This is kind of like underneath this bottom when you can kind of see how the dowel is right there so they won't fall. So when you do order these, I would, if you want the bigger, the 10 set drawer, you do want to get them together so they have those dowels. Otherwise you'll just have to figure out a way to attach them. This is the Ohuhu marker rack. This is um, a little bit pricey, but it's very sturdy. It's by, uh, it's made of bamboo, and you would just put your markers in the slots there. And I haven't filled mine up yet, but um, I thought that was really well made and definitely worth a recommendation if you're looking for something that's the lighter wood. This does, this meat in box does come in a like a more blonde wood, and I think also a darker brown wood. So um, you can find whatever will match your studio decor. I also like their Pashad box, and uh, I haven't had a problem with anything I've purchased from Meaden ever. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that. These were sent to me for the gift guide from Meaden, but um, yeah, they're, they're wonderful with their ceramic palettes, their wooden studio furniture, and their watercolor paper. You really can't go wrong with any of those products. That almost does it for us today in this gift guide, 2023 gift guide. I do want to add one more thing on to the list. If you would like to give a class to somebody that you love, I will offer a discount on any gift cards, gift classes. You can get 40% off any gift card or gift class from my teachable school. All you got to do is email me 
at artstudiosofbangor at yahoo.com. I'll put that email in the video description. Put gift card request in the subject line, and I will uh, tell me what class you want the um, gift certificate for. I will take 40% off the price, and I will send you a PayPal invoice for that. Once paid, you will get a gift card code that, and or a, or a link. I'll give you a code and a link so that your recipient can click on the link and just get enrolled for free. Um, and then you can give somebody a class, and that is also a wonderful gift, the gift of learning, and you can save some money on that too, because, hey, you've got a lot of people to buy for. It's, it's the holidays. Now, keep in mind, I am on vacation from October 20th. 25th through November 1st. So um, if you send in a request during those dates, it will wait. It'll have to wait until November 2nd when I return to fulfill it. But um, but yeah, you'll have it in plenty of time for the holidays. So thank you so much for watching this holiday gift guide. I appreciate it. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!